the pin which holds the fusee together is normally inserted from the side with the stop piece. So when you push it out, you push it out in the direction of the stop piece and then you can finish pulling it out with a pair of nippers like that. And when you separate the fusee into its separate parts, the cap, which is normally blue, this one has been sanded down for some reason. The uh, fusee separates into four parts. You've got the, the brass cone, you have the end cap, you have the Harrison's maintaining power wheel, and you have the great wheel. And in the great wheel is the maintaining spring, which you can leave in unless you have to work on it. Sometimes it's a wee bit on the strong side. This one is very strong, but uh, we'll see how it works. The clicks are in good condition in this case. You can give them both a test to make sure the click springs are operating. Very often the clicks are not ribbed in very well. If they've been replaced, they often float free and have to be put back in very carefully. But those are okay. One of them has been damaged because someone did turn this fusey backwards and in doing so they stripped the teeth. Now if you do need to replace the ratchet wheel that's made of brass and the replacement in this case has much coarser teeth than the original and that would help because it'll be much stronger and much less liable to be damaged by someone forcing it backwards. The old ratchet wheel is held on by two pins it's not soldered on or riveted on, it's simply held on by two taper pins and it lifts off if you lever it up with a sharp blade. So there it is, there are the two taper pins and once you've removed it it's a good idea to make two scratches, I've already done it, either side where the holes are so that when you put the new ratchet wheel on you you forget you don't forget where the two holes are and when you draw the new holes you can draw them somewhere else so you don't break into the old holes. Having removed the old ratchet, the new one you can see has a very small hole in it which doesn't even go on the arbor. The old one has a much larger hole and the reason for that is it doesn't ha just have to go over the arbor, it also has to fit over the maintaining wheel because that has a hub. So the old ratchet has to be has to have a sufficiently large hole that it fits over the maintaining wheel and it should just nicely reach the clicks. Each click should sit at the root of the teeth. And with the new one, this is a fraction larger than the old one and because the teeth are cut deeper, the clicks still reach the bottom of the teeth. So that's quite a nice replacement one. Having selected your replacement wheel, you then have to broach the hole out so that it sits down Still a tight fit on the arbor, you don't enlarge the hole yet. The first job is simply to broach the hole sufficiently for it to sit down against the fusee brass. The drill I'm using is a homemade spade drill. 0.5mm is about right. I simply hold the drill in a pin vise with a spinner inserted into the opposite end to apply drilling pressure. Here I'm just supporting the fusee on an old clock mainspring barrel. Drill all the way down until you reach the steel cap, which is not very far. I make my own taper pins. The commercial ones are much too hard and they have too strong a taper. So this one should just tap in tightly. And then we cut it off flush with our end cutters. We don't have to worry about tidying it up because this is going to get turned on the lathe and the surface will be turned away and the centre will be turned out to form the relief which will um, allow it to sit over the hub. So next we're going to put the business end, the, the large pivot, in the lathe and set it up to turn the rest of the ratchet away. Before I go any further, I'm just going to check that the teeth are facing in the correct direction, and they are. So now I set my lathe up so that the tool rest is at the correct height, so that the cutting edge is almost fractionally above the line of centres. And I've set the tool rest up so that it moves backwards and away at this angle when I flip it backwards. And I'm going to turn the surface it's slightly too proud at the moment because the 
ratchet is made a bit too thick and then I'm going to remove the centre and since I've riveted it in place it should stay rigid when I'm turning the centre away. The arbor isn't quite turning true so I'm just going to correct it slightly. And that's perfect. There we are. That's it, the centre is now broken free. It's quite a tight fit on the arbor, so I'm just going to lever it with my sharp blade and remove it. And there's the ratchet attached. Now I'm going to check that the hub fits nicely over the hole. I've turned it a good size, so I think it will. There's the new ratchet fitted, and the tops of the taper pins have become invisible because I've turned the whole surface down. One final note, the fusee is only going to close fully so there is no sort of forcing apart of the three parts if the ratchet wheel itself has no surface showing above the level of the fusee brass. So the two things should be absolutely level and flush with each other. The reason for that is that the maintaining wheel is also all on one level. So when they go together, the ratchet does not force the maintaining wheel to be further away from the brass than it needs to be. There's complete freedom in all the parts, everything works perfectly.